in our country, in the region, and around the world. We are seeing now that the food production and food security is becoming one of the most important activity around the world. Recognizing this fact, government has launched an aggressive campaign since August 2020 to ensure that the nation is well fed by achieving food security. Not only this, but to maximize agri-production and increase its foreign currency earnings through exports. We are very fortunate in Guyana that we are producing most of the food that we are consuming. But as a government, we are not satisfied with that. We want to increase production. And that is why you will see that we are making budgetary allocation, budgetary allocation in various sectors, especially the agriculture sector. Because if the agriculture sector is successful, then we can achieve food security. To support their mantra of increasing food production, during the first half of 2022, $15.8 billion was expended in the agriculture sector to expand cultivation to reduce imports, increase exports, and foster diversification. Let's take a look at the various sectors and what government has done to increase production. Due to the adverse weather conditions, coupled with the increased price for fertilizer, government had to act quickly to ensure there is no rice shortage in the country. As such, a decision was taken to purchase $1 billion in fertilizer to give rice farmers free of charge to ensure the wheel of production continues to turn. Apart from this initiative, $107.5 million was spent to create a variability and a breeding nursery to increase production by the Guyana Rice Development Board GRDB. Some 16,227 bags of seeds were produced for cultivation with the majority, 13,152 bags of quality seeds produced by the Burma Rice Research Center and the remaining 3,124 by private seed growers from Paris. Government is continuously diversifying the agriculture sector and has thrown its support behind the production of corn and soya on a large scale. For the first half of the year, 250 acres of soya were cultivated. For the rest of the year, some 2,450 acres will be cultivated to ramp up production. There are also plans to construct a corn and soya bean processing plant, which is expected to be completed in the first quarter of 2023. In 2021, Diana exported over $2.5 billion worth of coconut and coconut byproducts. This represents a $600 million increase when compared to the $1.9 billion that was exported in 2020. Of that amount, virgin coconut oil exports stood at $685 million, while exports earning for dry coconut totaled $1.8 billion. At the end of June 2022, the national effort to expand the production of coconut water and coconut-based products has seen success with a 58% increase in the production of coconuts to 27,598 tons. The coconut nursery at Fort Wellington, Region 5, has already been completed, while those at Hosororo, Region 1, and Lethem, Region 9, is expected to be completed by the end of the year. These three new nurseries will bring the total number of decentralized nurseries to 10, with a production capacity of 206,000 seedlings annually. The coconut seedlings production for the first half of 2022 increased by over 3,000. A mammoth $651.9 million has been expended to complete 109 shade houses and the construction of four greenhouses as part of Guyana's implementation of climate smart agriculture practices. This is part of President Ali's Shade House initiative that is designed to provide a platform for youths to transform their theoretical knowledge into real-world applications. Scores of Guyanese youths have answered to the nation's call to collaborate for the advancement of the agriculture sector. 
These high value crops under cultivation are meant to slash CARICOM's food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. A goal of CARICOM member states to ensure the region is food secure. It's such an amazing thing to take part of. Um, at UG, you only learn about the theory, and when I come here, it's practical. So you put in that theory into practice when you come here. And there's so many things that I've been trained, especially GAP, which is good agriculture practices. And these things involve good practic practical techniques that involve agriculture that will aid in sustainability and also it will increase crop production yield. We have seen a drastic improvement in the livestock industry. We have seen an increase and a growth in the livestock industry. So that's an achievement we all of us should take credit of. The Guyana Livestock Development Authority expended $406.6 .6 million of the 2022 budgeted sum of $842.3 million to ensure there is a growth in this subsector. Government ensured that there is no chicken shortage by distributing 1,050 broiler chicks, 1,150 black giant chicks, and 595 ducklings. The farmers also received the relevant technical support from the GLDA. Another move that exemplifies the equitable distribution of government resources is the $57 million given to 1,050 farmers in 2022 to assist with the recovery after the 2021 floods. As government continues to push the agri-sector and expand the production in Guyana, 20 farmers received the pigs from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority. The donation is part of the Rural Agriculture Infrastructure Development Grid Program. In our country, in the region, and around the world, we are seeing now that the food production and food security is becoming one of the most important activity, uh, activity around the world. And we have seen what have happened over the last two and a half years during the pandemic. Guyana is ripe as a major food producer for CARICOM. And in a few years, Guyana's production will quadruple. Our production level is about a million ton, a million kg, about 990,000 kg. We are hoping that in the next three years, we can increase swine production in this country to about 4 million kg. And that is achievable. Guyana is also expected to receive the remaining complement of 868 black belly sheep from Barbados in October. The Black Belly Sheep Initiative was launched back in March by President Dr. Mohamed Yofanali. The U.S. $3 million investment is one geared at increasing livestock production in Guyana in a push to become the livestock capital of CARICOM. Region 5 must be the livestock capital of CARICOM. <laughs> that is the vision. To do that, we have to increase our production. We have to increase our quality. We have to improve our breed. We have to use more advanced technology. We have to invest in infrastructure. And we have to work on building the partnership, all of which are ongoing. In August, the BBPC government injected an additional $177.7 million to provide additional resources to support the Black Belly Sheep Project. The government is working assiduously to position Guyana as the pillar in agriculture in the region, whereby Guyana will be assisting other CARICOM member states in achieving food security. We were able to send technicians to Barbados, technical officers in Barbados, to help them to start develop the agriculture sector. Who would have imagined that places like Barbados will start production of brackish water shrimp. But with our intervention, with the support we have given them technically, in another few months from now, they will start the production of brackish water shrimp. We are seeing a number of other crops that we are helping these countries, places like Trinidad. We have given them a number of coconuts. We have Barbados root crops, yam, sweet potato, cassava, and we have been working very closely with Barbados to start 
the black belly sheep industry. Heavy investment in the fisheries subsector is responsible for the astronomical growth recorded from January to June 2022. A whopping $142.7 million was utilized by the Fisheries Department, which sparked a 444.1% increase in aquaculture production. Works to increase the tonnage of brackish water shrimp started in 2021, and the rewards of government investment is continuously being reaped. Government has constructed 70 ponds to rear this breed of shrimp in Region 6. With the rehabilitation of over 673 acres of shrimp farms, which is benefiting over 28 farmers, brackish water shrimp production increased by 292.6% at mid -year. The establishment of cage culture in Region 2 for Tambake production is expected to be completed soon. This will ensure there is an adequate supply of freshwater fish. With heavy investments yearly in the agri sector, it proves that there is no wholesome dependence on the oil and gas sector as the savior for Guyana.